All right, let's move on to uh, Giants, Bears, New York Giants, Chicago Bears. Bears opening up at minus six or six and a half. This total at 40 and a half, 41 Fahrenheit in Chicago. The weather's fine, partly cloudy, 13 mile per hour winds. Giants come in off the bye, haven't won since September 29th, six-game losing streak, lost 34-27 to the Jets. Daniel Jones, terrible with ball security, 21 turnovers, eight picks, 13 fumbles. Marcus Golden continues to play well. Evan Ingram is going to be available. We expect he will be active in this game. They're also getting two offensive linemen back in Mike Remmers and John Jalapio. That should help. Nate Solder, who left the Jets game with a concussion, uh, is expected to be back as well. Sterling Shepard practiced fully. Uh, Janoris Jenkins still wearing a no contact. Both of those guys are in concussion protocol, but they should be back. In saying all that, the Bears coming off a 17-7 loss. Trubisky hurt with the hit pointer. Khalil Mack did nothing in that last game. Zero tackles, sa- zero sacks, zero quarterback hits, nothing. He did made... I know he's getting double teamed, but he's doing nothing. Is this a spot to jump on the Giants plus the points, Donnie right side? I mean, anytime you see plus the anytime you see the Chicago Bears at this point in the season or for the past couple weeks, it's always a spot to jump on the dog because Matt Nagy is not a head football coach. I don't know how he even functioned last year that where they actually made the playoffs and got at home. I, I, it's so far in the past. Their offense is completely dysfunctional. They have no tight end. First of all, the tight ends are injured. But even you know, looking at what they gave you production wise was absolutely zero. Your running backs, you have Tariq Cohen, who in this game against the Rams, I thought I heard was you know a 16 yard run, which is his longest run of the season for a guy that's supposed to be a game breaker. You have a plodding running back that can break tackles also along with him, which is a nice option. Allen Robinson's a decent wide receiver, but your quarterback is horrendous. So now we're going to be led to believe, you see all this, uh, I got to give the front office credit for the Bears and the head football coach covering for Trubisky every single chance they get. Yeah, sure, he was hurt at the end of the first half, but nobody checked him out. We looked in the locker room, he was fine, struggled the entire second half outside of one drive. You pull him on the last to say, hey, you know what, uh, he, he's hurt with a hip pointer. So let me get this straight. If he's going to play this week and his hip's hurting him again, what do we expect, 145 maybe? 170 yards passing out of Mitchell Trubisky. The offense doing nothing. We're talking about a Giants defense that is an actual actual sieve. And I can't trust the Chicago Bears at all at home whatsoever in this case. I actually look toward an under in this spot because the one thing we know about the Giants is they'll be horrendous in the red zone as well. And if they get down any more than seven points in a football game, Pat Sherman no longer kicks field goals no matter where he is out in the field. I like an under in this game, but I'm nowhere near the worst off. I would take the Jets offense, the Miami Dolphins offense, any offense over the Bears offense. They're horrendous. And to top it off, Jimmy, on top of that, their kicker is horrendous on top of it as well. I can't back the Bears. Can you back the Giants? I mean, it might be a product of where that line's going to go. I don't think it's going to seven points because everybody in the world would back them. Coming off a bye, you're going to get your best wide receiver back another week to maybe let Saquon Barkley heal up with that ankle injury. Defense has a chance to game because you don't even actually, I should throw it out. You don't even have to game plan against the Bears. I think the Giants might be backable in the spot, Jimmy. I do. I think so too. Joe Yurkovich, though, says Bears can finally run the ball in this game. Daniel Jones will turn it over. Bears cover 4-1. DX Filer says Trubisky is the problem. I, you know, I think the Giants can stay in this game. And I'm leaning towards that. That might be a, a, a look or a move that I make sooner rather than later. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this got to 5.5. I don't see this going to 7. Do you see this possibly going to Bears minus 7? They, it, there's no way it could go to seven. Like even like, what's the news we're waiting for? Like if Trubisky announced that he's starting, it'll stay the same. Even if Trubisky is down, the line isn't going anywhere. If Daniel's the backup, and they might even be an actual boon. But the one thing I would look at Jimmy as like a final thing. The good part about it is we get to regroup on Friday. If you're going to get a healthy Giants up, it's a Giants offensive line isn't very good. But if you get a healthy Giants offensive line, just to slow the Bears front seven down, they're going to be live in this game. They are. Yeah, I think this is going to be the first move that I make at this point. Uh, have Giants uh, plus six and a half in my pocket. And that's the best I can get, six and a half. Okay, 